I'm in deep cut and I'm with my mate Jack. Hello, Jack. Hiya. Right, so um, it's been a long time since I've flown. Probably, uh, well, it's before Christmas, I think. And um, I've got an indoor job coming up, an indoor commission that's, that someone wants me to do some work indoors. It's in, I can't give you too much details because I'm under a um, uh, non-disclosure agreement. But um, it's, it's in a big warehouse, that I can tell you. It's in a big warehouse. And the thing is, is that with these, with these drones, or particularly my drone, and we'll talk about the differences in a second. But with my drone, which is a, a DJI Phantom 2, let's have a look at it. In the, in, uh, that's it. That's my, my that's my drone there, and um, and that has a GoPro camera strapped to the bottom of it. Um, and uh, the thing is, is, is that when you're flying outdoors, it does have GPS built in, uh, which means that. Um, if you lose control of it or you get a bit disorientated and you don't know where you are with it you can initiate a fail safe and it will uh, return to base on its own where it took off from land itself and actually I have had calls to uh, initiate that a couple of times and it, it works like a dream now uh, Jack's got a brand spanking new Inspire one which is by the same manufacturer DGI to be honest with you I'm a little bit jealous um, this thing makes my drone look like a Morris. Yeah, let's compare them. It makes my drone look like a Morris Minor in comparison. Uh, so that's my drone. I haven't put the props on yet, and that's Jack's. Jack, just tell us because you own both of these drones. Just yeah. tell us what. Um, I mean, you actually your your other drone is slightly different, but it's very similar yeah. to my. Uh, Phantom 2. Just talk us through the different uh, elements of this. Well, first of all, we'll, we'll show this is more consumer home um, for anybody to for generally buy and purchase and, and design to fly. Again, on the GPS, just says it's, it very much takes the flying out, out. You just get up in the air, point in the direction and you want to take it, and, and, and away you go, basically. Yeah. Inspire is now the pro, sort of semi pro market, not the high level market, which is the more move industries. And the, um, they're, they're like octocopter yeah, things. Yeah. Sort of mixing the gap between. Um, normal market pro and then full movie industries. Yeah. So with the Inspire One, they've added a few more extras on board. GPS, a little bit more bigger, because it's also a bit more stable in the air. Again, it can handle much higher wind speeds than the Phantom can, can do. And also the other things, new ones now, is a full 360 or 380 um, oh, camera. So the camera oh, rotates right cool. way around. I like that. Okay. Yeah. You can pan up and down. Right. And you have control on the app, so you use the app finger to point the camera in the direction you want. Okay. Um, it's 4K recording where the uh, Phantoms on the Phantom Pluses, they're 1080p. Yeah. Um, your, yours one depends what GoPro version you've got on the bottom yeah, of it as yeah, well. Yeah. It's, it's using Lightbridge, which is a full H uh, HD stream back to your app, so you can see full HD on your app while it's up in the air. So it's an iPad or, or, or your iPhone, basically, or, or an Android device. Um, and another other feature it also has now is, this, uh, is sonar and an onboard camera at the bottom. So if we lose GPS in the, in the air, the sonar kicks in, but the sonar works together with GPS while it's in the air, but it's a backup more, so if you do lose GPS or you get down to like four satellites, it wanders, but this will stabilise it, so it looks at the ground all the time, know where its position so is. So you're minimising uh, uh, flyaway risks and yeah, all that sort of it. stuff. I mean, I've, I've had a one flyaway. Um, I initiated the failsafe immediately and it, and, it, and it came straight back, thankfully, but I, I've got to admit, my hands were together praying. <laughs> so, it's, it's quite expensive and they sort yeah. of go off and you think oh we're going to lose that it's a lot of money yeah but um the, it, this is great for indoor flying it's designed for indoor flying as well because of the sonar on the bottom and it, and it's very very stable right and i was out yeah yesterday in wind speeds of 12 miles an hour and this was sort of like at an angle where it's fighting against the wind but it stayed in its position that until i actually started Inc flying incredible it. so it's quite good should, uh, well, should we have a look at it flying yes because yeah. i cannot wait to see this thing fly i mean the reason why i'm here today uh, which the car a bit. yeah yeah the reason why i want to fly mine today is because i just need to practice my my flying skills because when you're indoor if you if it loses contact with the uh uh remote control um, you know, you, you, when you're flying indoors, you need much more flying skills because you're relying on your on your flying skills rather than on the onboard GPS and That's all that it. sort of stuff and stabilisation. So uh, let's let's watch Jack fly this incredible uh, bit of kit, and um, and then we'll fly mine. Now, hang on a minute, because um, also you've got uh, an iPad. Yeah. 
uh, on there. So what um, what that does is it allows Jack to actually see what the uh, quadcopter sees. I've got a question here. Do you need two people, one for the camera? No, that's what this is for. No, Explain th that, Jack. This is a, this is a single um, fly-in, so I can control camera and um, quad at the same time. But you can get a second controller, and they tether together nicely, and then, then that becomes the camera operator. So yeah. then you can have one literally piloting, and the other one actually doing all the cameras. And, and I've got to say, if you're doing this stuff commercially, uh, under CAA uh, regulations, you do have to have a permission to fly. And if you have um, two people operating, they both individually have to have That's permission right. to fly. That's right. So, um, but the thing is, these things are designed so that one person can operate them. But if you're doing, you know, full-on movies, yeah, you, you're talking crews to get to, uh, to to get the shot. To get to get a real good shot, you really need two cameras. So one can really focus on the camera angles, yeah, and also tell the pilot which position to be in. Yeah. But with the pilot, you always have to just fly straight, and the camera can be angled any direction you want. Right. You know, so it's quite 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 straight. It's quite easy. They've taken most of the, the hard work out. Of yeah, it. yeah. You know, so forget that. And um, do you have to? So with my my Phantom Two, I have to cal uh, sort of calibrate it to the GPS before I take yep. off. Do you have to do the same? Same with this one as right. well. It's very simple calibration. Just go for it sequence start. Okay, so a little bit bigger to do it with, but. Now this looks really silly what he's doing, but actually this is what prevents flyaways because what he's doing is he's uh, calibrating the GPS so it knows exactly where it is. Um, on mine it gives a light sequence to tell me that it's locked on to more than uh, the required satellites. If you want to get in the front, so I'll yep. show you and then I'll show you the landing and get it going up. Okay. Here we go. I can't really hear you, Jack. So um, I'll, I'll I'll give the commentary. So he's um, he's running the uh, he's looking at the camera now. So he's looking into his uh, uh, viewfinder there, and he can see what the camera sees. Is there any lag on that, Jack? No lag whatsoever. So he sees it as the camera sees it. So we're taking it up now. Fantastic. I wonder if we can see your uh, screen there, Jack, on on my on my thing here. Get it hovering just above us. Okay, and then we can have a look. Yeah. Can you bring it a bit closer because yeah, we're struggling to see it? Yeah. Bring it down a bit. Bring it down a bit. Yeah. The wind speed's pretty nice today, so it's, um... come 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 in closer, will you? Yeah, just come down a little bit. Okay. Here it comes. Okay, but now I'm just going to bring it down a bit. Got a bit up drop. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Lovely. Now, okay, so. so let's have a look, see if we can see Jack's flight controller here. Um, it's a little bit difficult actually. The sun as well. The sun and the reflection. But, um, it, there's all, so tell us what you, what, it's, what information it's giving you on the screen. On here you've got altitude, speed, height, distance uh, that's up and distance away from you as well. Yeah. Um, it also gives you um, your satellite views, how many satellites are linked up, your battery percentage in the, in the, uh, in the Inspire one as well. Um, so you know when your battery's going to go flat. Yeah. The battery does go to a certain warning level, it will start red light um, giving you alarms and then it'll, then it will go into return home if you, don't, if you leave it still running up in the air or then you can then just land it and change the battery over. Okay, just for, just very quickly, we've had a question. Is there an auto hover switch? Um, yes, no, this actually has two things. It's got, all, it's got an auto takeoff, so it will take off and hover, and then bring its landing gear up. 
and then you've got an, uh, also an auto um, land as well, so you can slow the button and then it'll come back and land for you. Right. So again, all that's automated. But, but the thing is, is with the, the with these remote controls, is, is that if you don't touch the remote control, if you don't touch the joysticks, it just hovers automatically. That's it. it doesn't go anywhere. And it keeps in. If the wind starts blowing it, it will move back. If the winds are quite strong. It starts shifting it. It will fight to come back into the same position all right. the time. Right. Yeah. So today we've got wind speeds are really low today, so it's staying now on the GPS. Slight little wonder, but that's about it. Okay, so just uh, bring it in a little bit closer. Yeah. So can we just so we can just see how stable? Bring it down a bit more. Yeah. That is really stable. So you'll put that in the hover. And we'll just have a little look round it. And now Jack's not even touching the remote controls, it's just hovering on its own. Fly it around close by and let's just see how manoeuvrable this thing is. Okay. Just just close by so that the camera can pick it up. Okay. Oh, oh well. and, and, and don't go too high. Okay. Uh, it, um, we've had a question, how long does the battery last? This one, on this battery type, 18 minutes. Yeah, on my DJI Phantom 2 you're looking at about 15 minutes I think with um, with the gimbal. They do a second battery for these which is a bit more high power and it'll probably do about 22 minutes or so. Right. Oh, no. so, um, it's, with the Phantom, when you do, when you go left or right, it'll drift and come to a halt. Yeah. This has got a new feature and it's called, um, I don't know what it's actually called, but it's like, snap this brakes on, it's probably better if I go forward and there. Yeah. If I go forward and let go, oh, it it stops on. itself. That's not me doing that. Yeah. It stops it. So it's much more, um, and what about the camera? Is it um, is it nice and stable? Have you got some nice uh, yeah. panning shots and stuff with yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it gets, it's 4K recording, so it gets really nice crystal clear shots. It's got a filter on the front, so it's filtering a lot of the sun out, so you don't get all that sun glare. Oh, it's like a polarizing stuff. lens. Yeah. yeah, and it's not like the um, GoPro or the other um, Phantom Vision Plus. Um, you don't get that sort of horizon look. It's right. a standard sort of straight. Oh, so it's not, you mean it's not a fisheye lens? That's it, not fisheye lens. Right, so okay. It's, so, it's, so why is it wide angle? When, wide angle, yeah. So you get. Uh, I don't remember all the settings on. I'm still learning all the settings because you can check, you can do the recording at 1080p at different high rate speeds as well. Yeah, so yeah. Done all that. Frame rate and frame stuff. rates and stuff. Um, you can now change the uh, snapshot so you can get all the ISO speeds can be changed and, and really get the right shot you want and stuff. Okay. Or you can leave it on automatic and you know, just do a great shot anyway. Most of the stuff I fly tend to leave on auto. Because right. it, it, most of the settings does what you need anyway. Right, but right. You can then tweak it if you want. If you're a photographer and you really want to tweak stuff, you have a set a certain setting you work with. You can do that, you can program it and it does it off fly. Right. Uses right. Lightbridge. Basically, Lightbridge is new technology for DJI, or it's DJI's own little product. It's normally a thousand pounds on its own to buy it to make yeah. your quads into it. And it gives you 1.5 miles radius yeah. on the on the radio and the controller because they've now combined together the same signal. Oh, okay. So I can play it about a mile, mile and a half away. Okay. And bring it back and have no problems at all. Uh, again, under CAA regulations, you, it always has to be in sight. Yeah, always um, line if of you, sight. If it's not in line of sight, you're breaking the law. Um, uh, with regardless of because actually these I know my, uh, my DGA Phantom 2 uh, with the what do they call this the forward uh, vision uh, uh, thing um, you, it's probably got about a five kilometer range on it yeah yeah I mean I wouldn't ever dream of doing no, that there's, but, a lot, there's a lot of hobbyists that's taken the radio adding new new antennas on them to make them double to the lip, because this does 1.5 miles but the right, just changing the arrow itself, you can probably triple that basically. Yeah. And then having a great big pod with an amplifier on it, then you can yeah. really go fast. But it is incredibly dangerous to do that. Right. Um, and and it definitely, uh, if you do invest in one of these things, you must always keep it in line of sight. The CAA is there. We're, we're quite robust on the, on the laws and what we can, can and can't do. The FAA is changing a lot now because the drone industry there is massive and I think we're going to follow suit very soon. They're now registering the drones now. So if you buy a drone, you registrate with the FAA with it yeah. and then obviously see that's, that's, that's the American equivalent of yeah. the yeah. FAA. This yeah. has now uh, an onboard black box. So right. it's recording my flight time, it's recording everything I'm doing now and it's recording my flight path. 
Right. So when I go back home, I can get my pen out, I can look where I was for today, because of the position I was, right. and you can see the flight path and play it back to yourself as well. Right. And that's a rule that the CA and F FA are requiring. And it's probably, uh, that, black, that that equipment is probably registered to you, because you have to register it online. Yeah, when it's you, all on your own account. It's, it's all on your own account. Yeah. So that means, if you get a flyaway, and uh, it's picked up by the police, um, it's found in a wood somewhere and it's picked up by the police. That means they can track exactly what you were doing, yeah. where, where it took off from, where it was when the flyaway occurred, when the problem occurred. And if you were doing something that you weren't meant to be doing, you're going to get nicked. That's it. Yeah, so I would imagine that is why um, they're, um, they're, 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 they're insisting on that. There is talks about, like, saying, like, line of sight. At the moment, it's very much line of sight. It's got to be in line of sight to fly. But they they're only they're only allowing you to fly beyond the line of sight if you can prove to them you've got safety features. So now they're now bringing on board like you've got the sonar on board, you've got the GPS on board, yeah. and they're now obviously bringing out. Um, we've got some now. We've got parachutes on board. Right. So it, it detects because obviously with a quad when it falls out of the air it goes upside down. So the parachute knows when it's unbalanced, fires it out, and can land it safely. I mean this is like two thousand. Got two thousand three hundred and fifty pounds worth in the air. Yeah. Put a parachute on it. At least you know you're going to come down if well, something goes well, wrong. Well, well, that's if you're high enough for the parachute to deploy, yeah. of course. Yeah. Uh, uh, but that 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 uh, is very useful. Yeah. Um, to go on then, fly it around uh, uh, low to the Start ground my, so we can see. my skills now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's see I'll some flying skills slowly. going on here. I mean, it's super smooth, isn't it? Yeah. A little bit quick crosswinds, but it's not bothering it at all. Now, you probably can't see, actually you can see, behind the uh, Inspire now is an aeroplane. That's going into land at Farnborough. And oh. this is one of the reasons why it's so important that you are always in control of this thing. Um, we're okay flying here because of the, the, the altitude of that aircraft, but it, um, there was an incident near uh, Heathrow Airport recently where there was a near miss. The pilot reported a near miss with a drone, and I think it was a, a Phantom. Yeah, new feature now they've added onto this because it's always been on the fa on the DJI products. But um, on my map, um, I'm not got it tethered to my phone at the moment, but it sh it shows me no fly zones. So all the like. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, Farmer's under it now. You've yeah. got, a, you've got an, an actual radius around Farmer. Yeah. So if you're parked in Farmer's main car park, the one that's where Queen Speed is. Yeah, you can't fly there. No, it's in, it's in the. Or if zone. you're on a far, uh, or if you're online of a final approach yeah. or whatever. Right. If you're in the zone, these won't even take off. They won't even power up. Right. And that's how good they are. And you can't, you can't override it unless you're going to be a really good hacker or something like that. Okay. But they really are built in. Um, and I know it's a lot around here, Heathrow, and there's a lot of places, even some of the military bases around um, around Surrey area, is actually got no fly zone in there. Yeah, well, well, yeah absolutely, day. absolutely. But, um, well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do, I'm going to end the broadcast now, bring it in so we can get one more closer look at it, because I need to get my practice flight on. Okay, I have to do it backwards. Because <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a job on it at uh, 12.30, I've got to go and see a flight. Another little feature as well, if you forget to bring the landing gear down, because it's using sonar at the bottom of the belly, this is what happens. Ah, it, okay, does, it does it automatically. And you get voiceovers as well in here as well. Right. And then... Fantastic. And there you go. Incredible. Okay, I'm going to end that broadcast. Thanks for your questions, everybody. It was really good. Thank you, Jack. That's all right. Thank you.